All right, party people. So today we're finally gonna start modifying the Camaro ZL1. I wanted to start off the first couple of mods being stuff that's very important. I think the at least two out of the three of these mods are probably the most important mods you should do to any car that you get, especially if it has wide wheels on it. We're gonna be doing a total of three modifications. And one of those mods is gonna be these ZL1 add-ons rock guards. And the reason I wanna get these is on the ZL1 1LE, the tires stick out quite a bit. And the same thing as with my Civic Type R, you know, those tires are sticky and they'll kick up rocks. They'll scratch up the paint on the side of your car if you're not careful. So I definitely wanna get these installed before I start putting a ton of miles on it. Um, the second mod, we're gonna do is we're not gonna do the full wrap. We're gonna be doing a partial clear bra on the front. And I just wanna do that to prevent rock chips until I get the car vinyl wrapped. Cause I do plan on vinyl wrapping this car in the near future. But I, I went ahead and I purchased this kit. The kit's for the full bumper, but I don't need the full bumper because I can already see where the rocks are hitting it. it we're just gonna do the top side of it. And then the th third mod we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be changing out the side markers on the front and the rear with some nice LED ones. And the cool thing is, is I actually found some LED side markers that I think are probably just as good as the Dio Dynamics, but they don't cost nowhere near as much. Um, I think they cost around $30 is what I paid. I'll be sure to put links for all this stuff down in the description below in case this is something you wanna check out for yourself. But without further ado, let's just head out in the garage real quick. Let's put all this stuff on. I'll show you how to install it. And then I'll give you kind of my final thoughts on it. All right, so before I actually show you how to install these guys right here, I wanted to show you what they're gonna look like, you know, kind of before and after the LED. So let me go turn them on real fast and I'll show you the front and the rear. So on the front, it's using a halogen bulb. It's also orange to the outside. So even when the light's not on, the whole thing is orange. Now let me show you the rear. And the rear is basically the same thing, it's just red. So in the front, we're gonna make them blacked out, except when they light up, the rear will be red, the front will be orange. But with the LEDs, instead of one little bulb that kind of flares out, it'll be a complete LED strip. All right, so to get these off, at least on the one LE, we don't have to remove the wheels or anything, but we do have to jack this up so the wheels will come down a little bit and then we'll have a little bit more hand clearance to get two screws out. So the front and the rear are basically the same in regards to install. They go in the same way. You only take two screws out of the fender liner, pull the fender liner out, pop the lens out, pop the new one in, and the same thing on the rear. But there is a couple little nuances that I wanted to show you. So first things first, we gotta jack it up a little bit. All right, so to get these out, you're gonna get a T15 Torx. I'm using basically a quarter inch socket, and then that holds my T15 Torx perfectly, unless you already have socket uh, Torx bits. This is how I'm doing it. So you got a, a little screw right here. You got a little screw right here, and that's it. We just need to take those out, and I'll show you the rest. All right, so now what we do is you just push in a little bit on the carpeting, on the liner up here, and you just wanna get your hand behind it. Probably should have put my emergency brake on my wheels turning. So you're just gonna get that out like that, you're gonna reach up at the top, and I'll show you this, and you just push that out. What you do is there's little clips, and then that comes out. And you can see, you just push down and push out, and then on this one you push up and push out. Then you simply unplug it. Now, unfortunately, you know, like I mentioned earlier, these are a lot less expensive than the Dio Dynamics lights. I've already done one side, so I could figure out some stuff that I needed to tell you. You need to test these before you actually button everything back up because there's nothing that indicates the difference between the fronts and the rears. So what, what could happen is you could plug these in and they would fit right, and then you go to turn them on, you could have, have them all crossed up. You could have reds in the front, oranges in the rear, or you could have a mixture of the two. So the best way to do that is to simply pop that on. And you wanna make sure you press this on really tight. 
on the other side when I did it, I thought I pushed it on tight, then I reinstalled it and the light wouldn't come on. So then I had to pull it back out, push it in harder, and it finally came on. So I just unlocked it. We can see that we do in fact have the orange one. So we're gonna continue to push it in. So with the plastic still in place, this is how I did it. You simply pop it in like that, pull your plastic off. Now all we gotta do is put our liner back and then put our two screws back. Another thing to keep in mind with these is once you know that it works and you have the right you know, color light on the front, um, these are, each side is specific to each side. So for example, on the other side, I plugged it in, had it hang in, tested it, it worked great. And then I went to press it in and it wouldn't fit. It was like the holes didn't align. And that was because I was trying to install the right side on the left side. So if that's the case, that's what's up with that. And let me show you the rear, because the rear is basically the same, but it might be a little bit different for you. So back here, it's basically gonna be the same thing as the front. Um, however, if you have the ZL1 rock guards um, installed on your car, you're gonna use a Phillips head instead of a T15 Torx. If you don't have these installed, you're just gonna use your T15 Torx. So again, it's the same thing. We're just gonna pop our carpet back. This carpet's a little bit easier to grab. I simply just push and it exposes a side, and you have those same pop clips that you had up front. All right, and pull that out. Now we're simply gonna take this one, pop it in, push it on really well, and then you wanna test it. And we're working. So let's button it up and I'll show you what it looks like all together. All right, so inside the box is obviously all your film. Then there's, looks like some instructions kind of wrapped up in there, let's see. Then there's like this tape stuff on here, so I'm just gonna gently cut that tape off. I was wondering where the pre-cut was. Let's see if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see the pre-cut on here as you're unrolling it. So I'm gonna unroll this on the floor real fast. All right, so I know it's probably hard to see, but on this sheet, um, I can actually see it. Um, you peel off the pieces that you're going to apply, basically. So there's one main spot that I'm really primarily focused on today. We might not install this whole kit, but let me show you real fast. I'll make sure to put links in the description for everything. I'll put a link to where you can get that 3M PPF kit. I'll put links to all the tools that we're gonna be using, and I'll put links to the waterless wax and all that cool stuff. You're gonna mix up this uh, waterless wash. You're gonna mix it up with, some, um, according to the instructions, with water. I'm using an Adams Polish's uh, waterless sprayer. You simply just pump it up and then you spray it on just like so. Then you take a microfiber and you just wipe down. This stuff has awesome, I love it to death. Um, the main piece that I'm focusing on today, if we don't have time to get to the rest, is this top piece right along here. Right here is where I got a couple of rock chips. And it seems to be the primary area for rock chips. Um, the hood, thankfully, is already wrapped from the factory, so we don't gotta worry about doing the hood portion. But down here on this bumper section, we're gonna have, to, if we wanna do the front bumper, we're gonna have to remove these dive planes. And from what I hear, they're not super difficult, but they're also not the easiest things to remove. Basically, there's clips that hold them in. Two of the clips can be accessed for, from within here, and the other two can be accessed from the wheel liner. All right, so I made a little spray bottle right here. Uh, this is not wax as you dry. I cleaned it out really well, and I mixed in a little bit of Dawn soap and some water. And this is gonna be what's called our slip formula, which I'll show you in a second. We're gonna be spraying this on the vinyl, and we're gonna be laying it down using this. The last piece we're gonna be using, aside from a razor blade to make any cuts, is a squidgy. So after I'm looking at this film here, I believe the portion that I wanna grab It's actually kind of hard to see, even for me, but I can see it. But you just find your edge, and you start peeling it up. Actually, you know what, before I do that, I'm gonna go spray the part of the bumper that I wanna wrap with the slip solution first. Then we're gonna spray this piece with slip solution, and we should be okay. I will say it's probably easier if you have a partner to help you with this, because 
I don't want to step on this film. And it's kind of hard to just peel it all without it folding over on itself, but hopefully we can do this. Because it will stick to itself if you're not careful. So what I'm gonna do right now, before I get too much of this off, is I'm actually gonna start spraying this tacky side. So if it does fall over on itself, uh, it won't stick to itself. So with this slip solution on here, we should be able to just lay this down, I'm hoping. And it did try to overlap on itself in a spot, but because we got the slip solution on it, it comes off uh, quite easily. Yep, so now what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just going through it, making sure that I have, have it laid out correctly. And I just use this spray bottle very liberally. And I'm gonna try to line up one side first, and then I'll work my way to that side over there. So right now, the goal is alignment. Another key part is, at least on this car, you know, this car comes to a point on the front of it. And thankfully, on the back side of this, uh, where this wrap is cut, it has a little angle there, so you can see where the angle goes. So I'm kind of lining that up, and then aligning this up. And then, it looks like the way this works is it's gonna overlay just on top of the front here, all right, I believe we're close to start squidgy time. So the way we're gonna do the squidgy is we're actually gonna spray the top of it with the slip solution like this. Okay, and then we're gonna use our squidgy here to just get out some air pockets and air bubbles and things like that. The slip solution will actually stop the squidgy from scratching the PPF film. So that's kind of cool. So I'm basically just pushing bubbles out right now. And whenever you relift this to do something, like say you need to reposition it, just spray underneath it to add more solution to it. That way it won't stick down so quickly. So if you start getting these little ripples that come up like this one here, it is because the film isn't completely, um, it ain't stretched properly. And those are called legs um, from what I've researched. And what we gotta do is we gotta reposition the film more down the line here and we'll be able to get those legs out. So the problem I'm running into here is right here where the very tip of the car is, I keep getting a fold. Kind of like you see like right here, you just get these little ripples and folds. And when I have everything aligned perfectly from here to over here, this fold won't go away. So what I'm trying to do now is get this fold tacked down and get it dry, then continue my way out this way. It's like if I get this to lay down, all this becomes crooked. And the moment that I get this straight, this pops up. It's the weirdest thing. All right, well, this is looking pretty darn good, guys. Um, it looks a little soapy right now. But basically, I got the ripple out from right here. And then a ripple started forming down at this end, down here at the other corner. Then I had to kind of pray it out a little bit. This line right here is even perfectly. But this line over here, but this line here is overlapping a little bit. I'm gonna have to cut that just so I make sure all those air bubbles get out. I'm gonna just take a razor and just cut it. All right, so if you hear a fan, guys, I'm sorry, but I gotta keep it going because it's 100 degrees still here in Arizona. And uh, I gotta get, I have to keep the fan on to keep the camera from shutting off. So like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be installing the ZL1 add-ons, rock guards. These are the deluxe version. And basically what the deluxe version is, is this side is textured and that side isn't. The textured side will be the side that kind of faces towards the rear, whereas the slick side will be the side that catches the rocks. If you ordered, you can order these as either front and rear separately, or you can order them as a combo. Um, if you order them as a combo, the ones that are thicker up here at the top are the rears, and then the ones that are thinner that have the 3M strip, they're the fronts. So we're gonna do the fronts first. First thing you wanna do is turn your wheel to the side so we can access these. Now the cool thing about these, from what I understand, is we don't have to drill anything and it uses all the factory bolts and everything. So also another thing to keep in mind is the ZL1 uses a different set than say the standard Camaro SS. So that's something to note if this is something you wanna get because you might don't wanna order the wrong set, but I'll link 
down in the description below where you can find the SS set or the ZL1 set. But this is gonna attach using these little pop clips, which I'll show you more here in a minute. So we're gonna reach in and you can see right here is a pop clip. I'm just gonna pop that guy out just like that. All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna go through this inner lip here with a little microfiber and rubbing alcohol to get all the dirt off of that because that's where the 3M tape's gonna stick. Otherwise, you won't get good adhesion. So essentially what you wanna do is you wanna find the side where the rough surface is gonna be facing towards the rear of the vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna take that little pop clip we took out, we're gonna put it into this hole right here. We're just gonna kinda pop it in. And that's all right, you can just let that hang like that. Just making sure I got all the dirt off of this. So with it laying down like this, I'm just gonna start peeling off this 3M backing, like that. What's cool is you can get it nice and aligned just like that, and that's perfect. You want this top edge to be flush with the fender. We're gonna take one of, one of these guys out. We're gonna take one, it's gonna go right here. Okay, and that's gonna help hold that on. Then we're gonna take another one here. We're gonna do one at this top edge up here at the top. And that's all there is to it. Now let's get to the rears because they might be a little more difficult. But... All right guys, so to do this rear section here, well, we gotta take this wheel off, unfortunately. A couple of things that you're gonna need. Highly recommend one of these guys, electric impact wrench. I'll put links in the description where you can pick these up. Uh, this one, I actually took my steering wheel off my Civic with this one. You're also gonna need a torque wrench it goes up to hundred, at least 150 foot pounds because these lugs right here, are their torque specs are 140 foot pounds. So that's kind of crazy. Unfortunately, I'm waiting for my lift pads to arrive. Uh, I ordered them, but they haven't arrived yet. But I have this Daytona jack that I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, I think I paid $140 for it. Um, it has a flat rubber pad right here and you can get a puck to put on here if you want to lift on the pinch welds. I don't have a puck. I ordered these lift pads that you attach to the car. But what I am gonna use is this jack stand, uh, rubber, rubber plasticky uh, piece to lift on the pinch welds. And then I have this cover right here also on my jack stand. So when we actually get it lifted up, we can put that underneath and then we can get this wheel off. But before we do all that, we need to break these bolts loose and that way it's not such a pain when we get it up in the air. All right, so in the back of the wheel well right here, we have some Torx nuts. There's one, two, and there's a third one up here. Um, I believe there are T, I'm using a T15 to get these off, but I tried taking these off with the wheels installed and it just was not happening. Even with a 90 degree turn wrench, it still wasn't working. All right, so again, we're gonna be, it's gonna be very similar to the front. On this particular set, we have the textured side, then we have the smooth side. The textured side is gonna face the rear of the vehicle while the smooth side faces the wheel. So in the bag with the uh, included hardware, you got a few little screws and some washers, and then you have these spacers, right? And you have spacers of different sizes. So you have a long spacer, and then you have two short spacers. So for the top two holes, we're gonna use the short spacers. And for the very bottom hole, we're gonna be using the very long spacer. So essentially the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna take one of our screws. There's a little black washer inside. We're gonna put the washer on. Now I'm gonna take one of the short guys right here. And then these are gonna be Phillips. So you won't need the Torx anymore. So I replace my Torx with a Phillips. And now we're gonna start at the top we're gonna work our way down. So basically, the way this is gonna work, we're gonna put our washer onto our screw and we're gonna put it through the shiny side here. Then on this side, we're gonna take one of those short spacers, just like so. Then we're gonna go up under here with our Phillips and, and get those aligned and just get it started. Just like that, right? So now for the next screw down, we're gonna do the same exact thing. I kept it kind of loose 
because we still got to put the screw through and the spacer. So that way I can pull it off like this. I can still kind of get back on here. Got that one started. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the last one. So on the last one, same thing, except we're gonna use the long spacer. You just kind of tighten them down. You don't gotta over torque them or anything, but basically you want them to tight enough so they're not gonna, you know, flop in the wind. This bottom one here kind of moves, but it's as tight as it goes. So now we'll reinstall our wheel and see how they look. Back up top. So I wanted to just kind of briefly talk about what the installation process was like, because you know, whenever I'm showing you how to do stuff on, you know, camera, I have to cut out a lot of the stuff just to save time, especially if I struggle. Um, I will say the clear bra, I've never installed clear bra before ever in my life. And it wasn't that difficult. It took a little time and I needed a little bit of a heat gun just to get it to set down in certain places. Um, I could have done a couple of other things. Like for example, if you have a corner that doesn't stick down, if you take a Q-tip, dip it in rubbing alcohol or seven, at least 70% isopropyl and just put that tip underneath where it won't lay down, then stick that edge down, that'll help it stay. I've put quite a few miles on it since I've installed it and I wanted to just kind of talk about it. It's protecting the car just fine. I haven't noticed any more rock chips in any other areas of the car so far. Um, it was mainly that top lip and it's doing its job. And it'll probably stay there until I get it vinyl wrapped. They might even vinyl wrap on top of it. I don't know yet, but I'm just happy knowing that the front end's not getting all chipped up. You know, the ZL1 rock guards, they weren't that difficult, but like I showed you in the garage, but I definitely think that these are perfect um, for protecting the car. I have driven it around, you know, where it's kicking up rocks and I haven't seen any scuffs on the side of my paint ever since installing these. So that's definitely a good thing. For the side markers, I will say this, you know, for the $30, $35 that I paid for them, I think it's totally worth it. I mean, don't get me wrong, Diode Dynamics makes great products. They have great quality, but there's some products where you don't really need that much more quality. And these things are holding up great. They're super bright. And I like the LED look of them. These do have the single LED strip. If you want one that has the dual LED strip, I'll also link those below. They're basically the same thing. Just one has dual LEDs and one has single. But overall guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have a Camaro SS or any six gen Camaro, I really think that all three of these mods would be good uh, for anybody, at least to protect your car. And then one to get rid of those stupid amber side markers. But we have a lot more content coming on the Z01. We're gonna get it tuned. We have headers that we gotta get installed. We have a Rotofab intake. I have a catch can. And then we'll also be moving to some interior modifications. But as it sits, I think it looks perfect. I just wanted to get a vinyl wrap done on it in the near future because I wanna do a little bit of a different color because black's hard to keep clean and it's really hot in the summertime. But let me know if you have any questions down below. And until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.